Hi, and welcome to our new episode. We are so excited today to get to talk to John Spender. Uh, and uh, we can't wait to tell you much more about this amazing guy and what he has to share. But first, we want to remind you, did you remember to subscribe to the channel? If not, go and click that like button and subscribe. And also remember to click the little bell so you get notifications every time we have new inspiration for you. So, wow, John Spender, he's quite a guy. And uh, it's not so long ago that we met and there was just a beautiful connection. And I could just really feel that this man is on a mission and he's so on fire to help writers to get their message out there in so many ways. And uh, well, just to tell you a little bit about him before we get started. John is the founder of the number one best-selling series, A Journey of Riches. Uh, and uh, in this series, over 300 authors has been along in all these books. I think it's about 25 books or so. And uh, from over 40 different countries. So this series has gone wide and broad. <laughs> and also, this guy is not lazy. He has also written and been producing the movie documentary Adversity. And in this movie, he's interviewing people like Jack Canfield and Dr. John Demartini and many more. Uh, so this is a guy who is really on fire. And I can't wait to welcome John on our stage. Hi, John. How are you uh, today? Yeah, very well. Thank you for having me, Eva. It's a privilege to be here. So good to have you here. And I know that you are tuning in live with me from Istanbul at the moment, right? Yes, Istanbul, Turkey. Yeah. Amazing. On your holiday. So thank you for Every taking... Every day is a holiday, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's right. I hear you. So um, thank you for taking the time to come and share with us because you are really someone who know all there is to know about collaborative books and how to write a chapter that really shines. And I, I wanted to dive into that with you and, yeah. and hear much more. Yeah. But maybe you could start with telling us a little bit about why do you think you are so passionate about helping writers to get their message out there? Do you have I think idea? it stems back to my uh, childhood because I didn't learn how to read or write at a basic level till I was nine years of age. And so I had a, um, a teacher that was really the um, turning point for me in learning how to read and write at a basic level. I mean, like, at, at, like the consonants, like the, the very basics of the English language and uh, was Miss Day. And so I went to her class. I'd written my first story. It was called Sausageman from Outer Space. And um, no one else could read it. It was in mumble jumble. I mean, I, all the letters are in different order and things like that. And I was labeled with all different types of um, things that I won't go into now. But um, yeah, she, I went to see her to show her. I was actually, in, she was my second grade teacher and I'd progressed into the year three. And I um, showed her, um, wanted to show her my story. She uh, had a look and she got my mom up to the school and had a chat with my mom and, and uh, introduced my mom to her friend who was, does uh, English tutoring. And that's how uh, I got started uh, really into learning how to express myself because I didn't feel like I had a voice. And uh, I certainly didn't feel uh, worthy and heard to a certain level. Now, I was a master distractor in the class and a class clown and very uh, good at getting kicked out of the class if it was my turn to read or so on and so forth if I thought I was going to be made fun of or something like that or put under the microscope from the teacher so I had my ways of getting around things um, and yeah just a long story short that's sort of how I got started so I think that not feeling like I had a voice and was able to express myself uh, to now you know having, you know, hundreds of, I had over a hundred thousand words published, you know, tens of thousands of readers, you know, copies sold, you know, over 25 books in this series today, you know, collaborated with over 25 different authors. Uh, and I think uh, tw uh, 300 different authors uh, in 25 books. And so the passion comes from, you know, the, you know, that time in my life where I didn't feel like I had a voice or I wasn't able to express myself. And so that's really where the passion comes from. 
I think it's so moving and beautiful to hear. Thank you for sharing that. I think many can also relate to that, you know, that that experience or that journey it is to become a writer. And yeah. wow, so I can imagine it has fueled a lot of that passion, yeah. Yeah. And uh, and also, I remember from one of our conversations that mm -hmm. it was not always easy uh, in the beginning when you started writing. You had some <laughs> trials on the way, didn't you? <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Well, it all started. I had the idea um, for to write like a you know my own book, and so I joined um, the Hay House Cruise. It was in two thousand and eleven, beginning of two thousand eleven. So I was leaving from Fort Lauderdale and it was just Hay House people and it was just Hay House workshop. It was brilliant, a brilliant cruise. And so I did the writer's workshop with Cheryl Richardson, Reed Tracy, Wayne Dyer was there. It was a, a fantastic experience. And I remember telling a friend before I left on the cruise that the book was going to write itself and that I would complete the manuscript in two weeks. And, and she was like, mm, I don't know, John, you might want to go easy and, uh, you know, not be so ambitious. She goes, because I've got friends that have been trying to write a book for two years and they're still going. And so it can take some time. And I was like, nah, I've got this and my story is different. And but every time I went to write, it was like procrastination became my new friend. Uh, you know, it was, it was dreadful. All of a sudden, you know, uh, the dishes became a higher priority or vacuuming or doing something else. I would just always get distracted. And so I had to, um, I find that anytime I get outside my comfort zone, all these limiting beliefs come up, you know, it's the, one of the best things about pursuing a dream uh, far bigger than you ever, you know, a dream bigger than you feel a dream that's bigger than you think that you can achieve. That it's almost like you embark on it and you feel like, oh my God, like, is this even possible? But you just know that there's this, this first step. So you take the first step and then another one appears and so on and so forth. And um, yeah, even if you don't achieve your goal, you, you grow and develop as a person. I think that that's the beauty of it. You know, you choosing your adversity rather than life tapping you on your shoulder and saying, hey, you know what, you're going in the wrong direction. So here's some cancer or here's an, another extreme adversity for you to, you know, realign and go in a different direction. Um, so, yeah. I hear you. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? So. Uh, and and, and what's happened? Yeah. It, yeah, it's just beautiful what you're sharing here. And I just wonder, so when procrastination became your friend, I love that expression. Uh, <laughs> something happened on the way uh, did, was there something about your book was at some point stolen or well yeah well <laughs> so um i came back from the cruise i hadn't yeah. written one word and um it was like a, i went for a couple of weeks and then the cruise was like for five days i hadn't written a word in all that time came back to australia i was living in bondi at the time and another friend of mine suggested that i get a, a dictaphone and just have it exclusively for the book and so I started speaking the book and I finished it in uh, January 2012. And I was at a Toastmasters speaking contest and I came home late one evening and um, I finished it just that, that day. Um, but I left my dictaphone in my pickup truck and I walked up the stairs to my place and uh, I was like, oh, shoot, I left my dictaphone in the truck. And I thought to myself, you know what, I'll get it in the morning, it'll be fine. So I go down in the morning and uh, I noticed that there's some broken glass on the road and it actually smashed my, well, one person smashed my rear corner panel window and had taken like everything. I actually had this metallic cross that I had in the middle of my, uh, they put in the middle of my seat. I got it from Brazil and that was the only thing. And some McDonald's wrappers. I actually sat in the driver's seat and meditated and actually had a visual of the person. It was this homeless man and I actually saw him uh, two days after that incident, but I thought, you know, well, I actually followed followed him for a little bit, and um, just out of curiosity, and he lived down this cliff, and so I just left some, uh, ended up leaving some. Uh, he, I felt into his energy, and it didn't feel quite right, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, maybe he could like, you know, I don't know, just my intuition said don't approach him. So I left some, it was coming into winter, so I left some clothes for him uh, at the top of the cliff. But, um, yeah, I was pretty mad. 
so initially wow. when it happened, like initially when it happened, but when I, when I bumped, when I saw him two days after, I just felt sorry for him. I really did. I could just see, you know, that I just saw pain and suffering. And um, yeah, I guess he just thought he could sell the my uh, the dictaphone. You know, I don't, don't think anything else would have come off it. But um, and then I I got a computer and I started t- typing. And my sister had got me a present, um, how to type, because I was just a one finger typer. And I slowly got better. And I finished the manuscript. It was more of a how to book because my coaching practice was starting to really take off. But I, uh, I didn't really know how to, I didn't save the file properly. And something, yeah, so, yeah, I was, yeah, it was pretty mad. It was pretty mad. So it was just, I was just fr- very frustrating. Um, yeah. And so, yeah. It sounds like, it sounds like quite a testing beginning of your writer's uh, journey, but yeah, well, we're I very just, happy. Yeah, we're I just think because, I, yeah, I think yeah. just because I had so much, fear of being exposed and putting myself out there and limiting a beliefs about being enough being worthy being intelligent enough you know there was still a part of me that felt like a stupid little boy you know and that was harder to deal with and I had to become best friends with that child and mm-hmm. it was difficult because I, I kind of wished he was something else you know I wish a part of me just wished he was smarter and things like that and it just took like a lot of courage I just needed to be there for that part of myself and nurture that part of myself through and it took a little bit of time and so I just needed to be a little bit more patient with that aspect of myself and I think that everyone has and that's the beauty about writing especially if you're writing a memoir you know it's such a therapeutic process that you get to reach back and not because you just never know who you're going to be helping, who's actually where you were, you know, say five years ago when you went through that event that you wouldn't wish upon anyone, you know what I mean? Someone's exactly. there right now. And so you just, we've got to get us out of, out of our own way and also we've got to nurture ourselves through it. And mm-hmm. sometimes that's doing some inner child work and, and you know, being, being there and holding that little child that didn't get those words of affirmation or, or encouragement uh you know at that time for whatever reason you know and so um it was such a gift to go to reach back and be able to do that and so that's why that's why those things happen because there was just you know i would i really needed to integrate in a deeper level with my inner child mm-hmm. oh thank you so much for sharing that's really that's that's a beautiful sharing and I think something it's very again, emotional you know it's an emotional yeah. thing and it's an emotional uh, place to share from that but you know what there's no emotion and this is a I've heard this so many times before and um, uh, it was shared with me like a a couple of years ago if there's no emotion in the reader in the writer there's no emotion in the reader yeah. Exactly. You know, and so don't be afraid of going that to that place and peeling back the layers like an onion and, and going in there. If it means you got to weep and cry, then that's what you need to do for you, your own healing. And that'll come through when you're writing, you know, exactly. and that's really you connecting to the core of who you are. You know, we're all equal emotionally. We all go through ups and downs. And if you can, you know, the, the vulnerability is the gateway of connection, and especially with writing. You know, yeah. because you don't have a visual connection, but you can feel the essence of the writer. And so, yeah. That's so that's so good. And that is so much, you know, in in the heart of, of the way I also love to teach magical writing because it is yeah. here that it's here we can recognize ourselves as readers and not feel alone. And it's so healing and transformative to experience as a reader. So so thank you for, for sharing also with other writers who are going through that vulnerability right now, maybe in this moment, feeling that vulnerable inner child and and knowing that it's a part of the journey and it's uh, it's all as it should be. And um, and yeah, so when when thinking about collaborative books, I know that a big part of that is that you get the writers to share their own stories, right? So this is very related to what we're just talking about, that it's about storytelling and about getting your message out there. But what do you feel is the beauty about 
especially collaborative books. What is the beauty of being along in such a book for a writer? Uh, maybe you can share that with us. Sure. Well, from, it's you get to share the experience. Uh, I think that's the beauty of it. Uh, so often, you know, as writers, when you're writing, you know, it feels like very much a solo endeavor. And um, to a certain degree, you know, there's those moments where, you know, your fingers are trying to keep up, you know, with the download that you're getting or the inspiration. It's almost like you're a kitten and you're just following that thread. But from a collaboration point of view, it's a shared experience. And also to be part of a successful book. I mean, most books only sell 250 copies in their first year, um, whereas we've got like a solid readership now. And so to be part of a successful book, I think feels really good. And you get to share that with other authors from around the world, all the books, our international books, we have authors. So you get many different perspectives on the one theme. And um, yeah, it's just, it's a beautiful thing. You know what I mean? It's the strength of the human spirit is, is incredible. And it's just so evident in, in these books. You know, in the mm. Indian journey of Rich's books, it's just the strength of the human spirit and what people go through and what people overcome is incredible. You know, it's, it's awe inspiring when, when you, you know, read another person's journey and what they've been through. Yeah, it's beautiful. I love it. And, and uh, thank you for giving that opportunity. I know that many of our writers are also yeah. joining your book, your coming book. And I think that's so beautiful for them also to get that experience of getting out there in a broader scale and, and also the confidence it can give you to be part of a successful book right away. And maybe before you write your own and stand alone, in, in that right so yeah um, definitely the confidence and uh you get to have a bit of a sneak peek into what goes behind putting together a successful book you know and um, the type of things and strategies that we do uh what works what doesn't work yeah it's very insightful so yeah we've had yeah, yeah many um right we've had many writers that have been published authors that wanted to contribute because they wanted that collaborative experience. Uh, we've also had many uh, authors go on and write their own book or even create their own book series. Uh, and we've helped them with that as well. So it's yeah. awesome, you know, it's just, yeah. Beautiful. Of expression and, and making a difference in the world. So. Exactly, and, and get your voice out there, <laughs> but in a yeah. maybe a little more, also a little bit more easy way than if you do a whole book, because it's, of course, a different story to write a chapter and a book. And I want to dive a little bit more in about the chapter, because um, you have so much experience with it. this, you know, uh, who else to talk to about this? <laughs> well, well. Uh, yeah, so okay. your experience, what would you say is the most important to if you are part of a collaborative book how to make your chapters shine or be memorable um what is what is in your experience the most important i think the most important is to relate it to the theme of the book so each of the books has a certain theme and so uh, the book that we're um that a few of your authors are on and we're launching very soon is the path of inspiration and um, relating, making sure that your chapter relates to the themes. So often uh, we have writers that just, yeah, the, 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 it's more, say the chapter feels more, it could belong in a healing book or you know a, another style of book. So number one would be making sure that your chapter relates to the theme of the book that you're contributing to. I know it seems obvious, but it's, uh, that's the, 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 yeah, that seems to number, be the number one challenge. Is making sure that your your story your chapter relates to that and number two is to start with clarity have a sense of clarity like uh, know why you're actually sharing your chapter really makes a huge difference like getting really intentional about what you're writing why you're writing it like the purpose behind it you know what are some of the key takeaways and learnings and understandings that you got from your journey because that will flow through into the reader and there'll be key takeaways, learnings and understandings for the reader as well. Where do you want the reader emotionally? You know, it's great to write sensory and have different nuances and really, you know, have uh, you know, a strong sense of you coming through with feelings and emotions. But you also want to have, um, you know, some clarity about 
um, that in terms of how do you want that to land to the reader? I think that that's, um, it's helpful to get super intentional before you begin. Yeah, that, that really resonates with me. Yeah. Thank you. I love, I love that. Yeah. It's like asking yourself the question, uh, maybe uh, what do we want the reader to feel after they have read this chapter? Yeah. And then you can always go back and find the right stories. And yeah. Well, and then you, once you have that intention, I mean, then it's going to flow through because it's a clear intention. I mean, with intentions, I find that once you set them, then just forget them. It'll just naturally be... Um, you know, it's almost like making a mini contract with your soul. It just filters through in, in, your, in your writing. That's what I've found. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, having some clear intentions before you, you begin is, yeah, it's a huge step to having a, a, a chapter that actually is expression of clarity. And then lastly would be to have a clear narrative. What is the underlining theme of your chapter that relates to the big theme? Uh, and that helps you keep the main thing, the main thing, because so often to have many different tangents, especially if you're condensing your life story or it's best to just to focus on a memoir or a certain time period and then just do that justice, you know, go into that, pl uh, into that place and, um, you know, really dive deep into it. But making sure that... Um, yeah, you have a main narrative, a main theme to your chapter. And that way you don't have many different tangents going along. And also it can help you with your um, antidotes, with your um, metaphors, that they're aligned to the main narrative. And so because it's so easy to get a little bit too abstract. And if you're getting too abstract, it just means that a part of you is afraid to express what really wants to come out. And so that's, there's some key telltale signs when you're actually writing. If things are getting a little bit too abstract, uh, you know, then you need to ground it down to your actual own experience and open up and just some self-talk, you know, congratulate yourself for actually taking this step. Reward yourself some with some chocolate or a massage or something. Nurture yourself through it. Everyone loves chocolate. Um, I love chocolate. <laughs> I think mean, actually eating a lot of Turkish delight, but you know, treat yourself is the main point that I want to get through. Mm -hmm. Nurture yourself through it, and, and however way you need to do that. For me, it's like whatever little Johnny wants, little Johnny can have, and yeah. uh, that's the way that I, I nurture myself and just keep him, you know, at ease and without you know rocking the boat. Otherwise, you know, it can be a little saboteur and you know yeah. can be quite difficult. And so, um, yeah, keeping the main thing, the main thing um yeah nurture yourself yeah. through it so so beautiful what a, a, a treasure chest of good advice and guidance we just got here john i love it and yeah. it, it resonates totally i love it also the precision part and what is it i'm scared to tell <laughs> you know when it's yeah. too fluffy yeah. uh, what are we hiding here and yes and also to bring people into a scene where they really can actually get that little moment of wow wonder and really feel it even in, in such a short span of pages that you have in a chapter right it's possible uh, you can so, do a lot in a chapter i mean it, it's a the three to five thousand words is a standard chapter i mean there's a lot of chapters that are shorter than that um yeah you can share a lot uh, and more isn't necessarily better uh, you know, sometimes when a story's done, a story's done. You know, we've had, we do like to say three to 5,000 to give a guide, but we've had, we've accepted chapters that have been like just over um, 2,000, it was 2,700 words, but the chapter was complete. You know, the story was done, it was ready uh, mm -hmm. and it just felt right and ready. And so, yeah. But we I just, hear you. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes less is more. That's, that's true. So, 100%. yeah. So <laughs> often we get like this 7,000 uh you know word manuscript and it's kind of like uh you know chapter and it's like oh it's, you know for a chapter it's a bit a bit big for what we're looking for so three to five thousand words is a, a pretty good indicator we've found um so yeah yeah and it's probably quite the same in, in many of these kinds of books isn't it i don't know it, well, it might yeah, vary I mean, jack canfield and so uh the most successful anthology uh book books are the um chicken soup for the soul right yeah so they're like uh 1200 words hmm. so they're, yeah they're a lot shorter yeah. i think um moth books are, are pretty popular and they're also short stories 
Uh, they're a lot shorter. Um, so it's just a condensed version. So I think three to 5,000 words uh, yeah, really gives you an opportunity to get raw, real and vulnerable um, if it's a memoir. It uh, depends on the style and the purpose. You know, it comes back to the why. You know, I don't have to say it has, each chapter has to be a certain way. Really, I, it's a freedom of expression and I want to meet the author where they're at. And, um, yeah, as long as it relates to the theme of the book, so people are reading is like, oh, yeah, I'm reading a book about, you know, abundant living or I'm reading a book about a new paradigm of leadership or I'm book, reading a book about the attitude of gratitude, whatever it may be that it's like this chapter belongs there. You know what I mean? So that's the really only thing. But you can do a lot in the edit. It's a process of refinement. So we're not looking for perfection. It's, you know, you don't reach, it's very rare that you reach perfection in a first draft. You know, and it's good to have as many eyeballs on it as possible. You know, having you know, people critique, just have a look at it that are on your side, that are wanting to bring your voice, you know, to the forefront. So Beautiful. Thank you so much. Yeah. Lovely. I mean, this is this is uh, gold for everyone who's either writing such a chapter or is curious about doing it. And um, yeah. wow. So I think you must have had so many experiences during these years with writers uh, and stories. And I know this might be an impossible question to be asked, but is that one story? that has been shared in one of your books that has in some way especially moved you or stayed with you? And I don't know if you feel like doing so that. So many. There's so many. I know. There's it's kind of hundreds, hundreds. hard to answer. <laughs> yeah. oh, well, one that springs to mind, I don't know if it's the most memorable, but it just sprang into my mind, was from the first book. And it was um, from Vanessa Tran. Uh, she's originally from Vietnam. And she had to flee Vietnam in the, after the war and they were refugees. And so they, um, her mother sewed in uh, like money and, and gold pieces with uh, like rings and jewelry and, you know, um, just amulet, like uh, jewelry and things have been passed down from generation to generation. So she sewed them in the clothes and they had enough money to um, pay um, the smugglers to get them on a boat and out of Vietnam, you know, people died and then pirates came and, and robbed them and killed, and killed, you know, a few of them. And just, and like this happened right in front of her. And then they arrived to one Island in uh, Malaysia and people were like throwing stones at them. And then they went to another Island and there was like a refugee camp there. And then they eventually got taken to taken in, in Australia and had to go through a whole rigmarole. And of course, they were, she experienced racism in the schools in Australia. And this was in the 80s um, before it was so multicultural. And just her journey of what she had to go through. And wow, you know, it was just so um, heart opening. And she's just such a lovely human being. Like all those adversities haven't soured who she is. It's strengthened who she is. And I really admire that and I admire that in her and she's success. She's like her and her husband are hugely successful in business and property and they've got a you know, portfolio here and a portfolio there. And, you know, their wealth creation was a high value for them, I, I guess, just from where they came from or having nothing and then coming to Australia and seeing so many opportunities. And, um, yeah, her story really touched me, but there are so many. I, really. know. Wow. I mean, every book, you know, it's almost every chapter, you know, it's going to resonate with someone. Um, mm -hmm. But I learned so much, you know, I read every chapter. I mean, I don't, I wouldn't, I don't have to, I've got a team, but I make sure I read every chapter and um, yeah, it's a lot of times people yeah. want. So yeah, it's, they're beautiful okay. books and they're, you know, it's, it's a human spirit, you know, it's, there's so much divide, especially now. And um you know, just these books for me are just a great reminder that we're, you know, we're all equal emotionally and, you know, we're here to support and help each other. Yeah. We're so much more like than we are unlike. Yeah, uh, totally. totally. Angelo said, yeah. yeah. Thank you. And thank you for sharing that story. It sounds like a really strong story and yeah. uh, so beautiful. So 
Wow, thank you for bringing all these stories out and uh, also for inspiring others to share their stories. And I want, I want to ask you, John, because I know you, you write also yourself a lot. And yeah. um, is there like, um, what, mm, is there like one good advice you would like to give writers in general, uh, just when it comes to writing, something that is kind of really, really working for you uh, that you'd like to pass on? Well, there's so there's so many things that I do, you know, just to give one thing, like I really do have like a set process um, that I follow um, that really has helped me, you know, overcome a lot of the limiting beliefs that I was faced with my writing journey and that, you know, I still get, I, I don't know if um, my wounds around that area are fully going to heal. I've just become more okay with them. And that there, uh, there's a, you know, there's not just one side to the wound. There's actually both two sides. You know, there is the perceived uh, negative downdraw, and there's also the positive. There's actually a direct, direct result of going through that experience or having that wound. And so, you know, there's an equal or greater opposite to any every experience that we go through. And so, um, I would say just keep going. Just trust that you know you're meant to write this book, and you know, success leaves clues. You know, there's a lot of people um, out there and a lot of advice out there that can help you and just allow your intuition to take you into the, the right area. Um, yeah, I mean, that's really what happened with me. And then, um, yeah, I developed my own sort of system that can help. But it's not one size fit all. And I think that um, for me, I mean, I, for me, step by step, take it step by step. You know, if you look at it, in its entirety, I've got to write a whole book, then it can be quite daunting. I, I see it like, you know, if you would eat a chocolate elephant, you know, you how do you eat a chocolate elephant? It's one bite at a time. And, you know, perhaps start with the, the toenail first. Take the first bite and then bite by bite, you know, bit by bit you get through it. And so um, I like to sort of simplify things and I like to break it down in a step-by-step process um, that gives you clarity, direction, purpose um, and enables you to connect in with your soul you know the call of who you are uh, and I, I find that you just don't get there by clicking your fingers it's uh, it's a step-by-step -step process so mm -hmm. uh, that's least how it's been for me anyway yeah. so I can't speak for everyone but we've got pretty good results so it's uh. wonderful John and and very uh, again something that I can also really relate to I love it yeah. it's uh, so beautiful yeah. to to yeah. make it um kind to the inner child the process right and and, yeah. and i love the chocolate elephant i mean here in in europe it's more maybe chocolate rabbits but you come from bali and australia so it's chocolate mm -hmm. elephants and I kind well, of you get, yeah they're bigger <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you get more okay. chocolate <laughs> my inner girl wants a chocolate elephant now i can do that <laughs> yeah. uh, but but thank you for that kind and, and and trusting advice because I think you're right. I mean, there's we all have our path and there's no right and wrong. It's about finding what fits uh, us and what there's no helps right us or wrong. wrong. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So good. But now, my dear, you know we have some questions that all our guests are asked, uh, and you can't escape them, and they're pretty silly, but they are kind of for the inner girl and boy. So let's play okay. here. Let's play. <laughs> Okay, That's so so, which book in the whole world would you wish that you had written? And you're not allowed to pick any of your own, of course. Uh, the Alchemist Polo ah, I it's know. Really it's, kind of I mean, it, it's, on, it's almost everyone's top five list or top ten list would be the Polo Coelho, The Alchemist. And I mean, it's got an amazing story behind that book as well. It's first year it sold like less than five copies. And a publisher picked it up and it sold, you know, a few. But it wasn't until, you know, people like Madonna got seen with a copy, um, Bill Clinton was seen with a copy, that the book really took off. Um, I sold, I think it's over 45 million copies. Um, yeah, it's made in, it's over 500 million, I think. Um, it's an amazing publisher. Book. It's an yeah. incredible book. It's magical. I read it for the second time uh, a couple of months ago and it's, it's so still brilliant, you know. It's a brilliant and it's a and it's a bit like, yeah. yeah, it's it's a short book, you know. So yeah, so good. Wow. I hear you. So <laughs> 
what if you could invite three guests for an intimate dinner party and uh, you could pick whoever you wanted, living or on the other side, who would it be and why? That's a huge, yeah, I mean, you could spend like a whole week trying to, you know, uh, especially if you could just, you know, beam, beam him up, Scotty, you know, bring them, materialize them at your dinner table. That'd be pretty cool. Well, I like Anthony Kiedis. Uh, I think he's a real character. Uh, you know, he's a creative. And, um, yeah, I kind of, I really like his music. So I think he'd be an interesting character to have at a dinner party, uh, you know, a, a big personality. And so, um, yeah, it would be great. I would like to have um, probably go to the other end of the spectrum. So someone that's maybe not as um, uh, probably a little bit more of an introvert. And this just sprang to my mind would be Steve Irwin. You know, I love nature and how, I don't know if you've heard of Steve Irwin, but um, he was huge in the documentary uh, Wildlife Space. And uh, yeah, he died in 2006. Um, yeah, we died by a uh, stingray uh, in, in the heart. But I'd like to have him. And then um, another guest. Probably, um, and Madonna would be really cool. I think that she's another out there personality and would bring a lot to the table. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, it'd be great to have Madonna. Uh, I love it. It sounds like an amazing and very creative dinner you will have together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Imagine, yeah, it'd be wild. Maybe you can make a collaborative book with those three. That'd be cool. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Next yeah. time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you're doing great here with these strange questions, but we have to ask you also, what yeah. would you blush if anyone knew about you as a writer? Do you have any any procrastination uh, habits that you're blushing about or are you just all good with it all? I'm generally Anything? pretty good. I'm generally pretty good. Uh, sometimes I can leave things like right to the last minute because mm -hmm. um, I'm just focusing on everyone else. And um, even with, you know, I'm, um, I'm currently refining a manuscript um, for my first solo book. So after all that time, you know, uh, it was like 10 years, I think, from the first time I was going to uh, write the book. And so, um, yeah, and I've just I've got a strong purpose behind, you know, writing. I've had other manuscripts that are just like, well, what's the point in, in sharing them? And so, um, yeah, leaving, probably leaving things to the last minute, um, mm. yeah, to, to refine them and get them to the editor. So, yeah. Thank you for making us all feel so much better about ourselves. Yeah, I'm sure I'm not the only one that does that. But there's a lot of writers that get stuff in early, which is just so admirable. So. It's, but it's something I think many of us recognize. So that's lovely. Yeah. John, this has been amazing. What yeah. a treasure chest of wisdom and insight and sharings. And wow, thank you so much for yeah. being here and sharing so generously from your experience. And um, I wonder how can people get to follow your work and uh, get to maybe be along in one of your books? So is, is there any links or something? Uh, sure. Well, yeah, I can. Uh, there's a link to one website. Uh, we'll put in the comments below and uh, my email address. And then also um, I have a Facebook group uh, that I'm really active in. Um, it's called Your Book Writing Breakthrough. So, yeah, it's a great when, group. Yeah. Good. We can put the links for, for that and uh, people can go find you and uh, continue to be inspired by your amazing soul. And uh, thank you so much for being here. It's been thank a great you. joy. Thank you. And thank, you. Oh, thank you, Eva. And thank you to the inner boy too for showing up and sharing so openly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, thank you. Yeah, it's been awesome. Thank you so much for having me. So... If you found this conversation insightful, helpful, useful, please click that like button and let us know in the comments below what was, was moving you, how could you relate, and uh, let's hear from you. We love hearing from you. And now we we'll give the stage to our beautiful singer and songwriter from Norway, Mukti. Mm -hmm. Don't you stop 
Telling yourself you're so strong Why not just wake up And realize you're not on your own Walking through the dark at night Let me be the street lights I want to see you safe home Yeah, I want to see you home this is your life I never worry for you This is your life It's my way of caring for you Cause I know there's always a reason why Why don't you drop? It's figuring out how to make it right. I know you got letting it go brings you back to life. Taking on a rough ride, I am here right by your side. I want to see you safe home. Yeah, I wanna see you home This is your life I never worry for ya This is your life It's my way of caring for ya Cause I know there's always a reason why